Hey everybody, how are you doing today? This is Jim from the Pain PT. Good to see you all here. And I appreciate all of you. If you like the channel, give it a thumbs up. If you like this video, subscribe to the channel. That helps get more uh, viewers out there, garners more attention. And I do this to really put out education, information for all of you so that you guys can understand more about mind-body conditions, understand more about chronic somatic symptoms, which can be a number of different types of things in your body that can have the roots in the brain and nervous system. And myself working as a physical therapist for over 20 years, 25 years, I used to work completely from a biomedical point of view, a structural point of view, and I've completely shifted my practice now, working 100% with these type of conditions from a brain and nervous system perspective. Now, not everybody has mind-body condition, but if you have a chronic condition that has not healed or has not gotten better with other types of treatment or seems to be out of the, the range of what would be considered normal for healing, it's quite possible you have a brain and nervous system driven condition. And today we're going to talk about a part of this called central sensitization. Some of you may have been heard of this term. Some of you may have not. Some of you may have been given that diagnosis from your doctors when they couldn't figure out what was wrong with you. They said, yeah, you have central sensitization or sensitivity. So think of the word sensitivity because that's really what central sensitization is. It's when our central nervous system is overreacting to normal input. It's overreacting to anything that's coming in through our senses and it's kicking out a strong, large reaction. It doesn't make sense in regards to what's coming in. Okay, so I'm gonna share with you guys today some information about it, and also talk a little bit more about how that term has evolved over time and what it means more today than what they traditionally saw it as. So I'm gonna to refer to the Cleveland Clinic here. They put together a nice uh, article uh, a, few years, a few years back, uh, or 2023 on central sensitization. And they go on to say here that it's a, it's a pathophysiological process in which the central nervous system, which includes your brain, spinal cord, undergoes changes that alter the processing of pain and other sensory stimuli. It may be the mechanism underlying various conditions in which patients have unexplained pain, symptoms, fatigue, all sorts of different types of uh, conditions and symptoms. And they go on to say that patients frequently misunderstand the cause of their symptoms and pursue unnecessary evaluations and treatments. And this is so important for someone as a health professional here and coming from a pure biomedical perspective to shifting to the other side. I can see things so much more clearly now than I did before. And it's not practitioner's fault that they don't have the training in this area. That unfortunately patients are getting these treatments and going for evaluations and they're not helping because the practitioner is treating the body is not treating the brain. Central sensitization is about your brain and nervous system. It's not about your body. And again, the key points here they mentioned in this article is that the central nervous system undergoes structural, functional, chemical changes that make it more sensitive to pain and other sensory stimuli. So it's literally a more sensitive system. And they talk a lot about here about what goes on specifically in the neurons the brain centers and the synapses and chemical changes and things like that, which you don't need to understand, but you do need to understand certain things about it. And you're gonna see here as I, as I explain it more, how it's evolved over time into more of a psychological construct than just a biomedical construct here. So they say in this article that with central sensitization, it, it's an explanatory framework for understanding these unexplained medical symptoms. And they say here it's possible and imperative to help shift the patient's attention away from a potentially harmful treatments and toward effective non-pharmacological methods of pain management, right, or symptom management. So we want to move away from treating the body, which again, is not something I do anymore for these conditions because it's not going to be appropriate as it would be for an acute physical structural condition. And we, we tend to want to move away from pharmacological treatments because they also have a limited ability to help the person and the person can get stuck at a certain level and not actually be treating the sensitization. So what we see here, and I want you to make this a point here for all of you, 
And this really goes in alignment with what Dr. Sarno taught for many of you know about what is diagnosis of TMS is that, look, this is nothing wrong with your body. There's something wrong in your body, wrong in your tissues. There's no issues in the tissues. It's all driven by your mind. And what central sensitization, that term was brought about in 1989 by a guy named Wolf and King. Okay, and they studied rats here and they figured the neurons in the spinal cord could become hyper excitable over time after injuries. Okay, so what they found in that study and subsequent studies was that central sensitization can be maintained with or without continued peripheral input, meaning you might not have anything coming in from your body uh, anymore. There may be nothing in your periphery. It's all in your brain now. Okay. So that can lead to what they call a persistent heightened state of neural reactivity. Just think of the word reactivity. It's being highly reactive. It's sensitive. Okay. So it's going to have easily be triggered potentially or have a large reaction when it is. And what they say here is that the central nervous system, again, thank you, brain, spinal cord, nerve endings, is hyper excited even in the absence of sensory stimuli. Okay. So what this means is the brain itself by itself can cause these symptoms in your body. Okay, this is the point I wanna make. It's your brain that can cause these symptoms in your body through the central sensitization. Absolutely nothing wrong in your body anymore. Absolutely nothing wrong in the air of your body where you're having your symptoms. This is a take home message here today. Okay, and this is what they found through this condition. And for some people, they can have what's called a trifecta of central sensitization. They can have what's called hyperalgesia, which is when a painful stimulus becomes associated with even more pain. You know, you touch something that's painful, oh, and then it blows up even more pain or it gets activated by something that gets even worse. Some people have what's called allodynia, which is a previously non-painful painful stimulus now causes pain. Okay, so many patients with central sensitization can have what they say here, that a hug or a pat on the back hurts them. Clothing irritates their skin or heavy blanket exerts painful pressure. So things that are normal, everybody, think things that are normal that you would normally say, that's not a problem, are now causing issues. Think of food sensitivity as a classic one, the word alone, sensitivity. People eating certain foods and getting reactions. Well, in this case, it's not the food. Likely, it's the sensitivity of our brain and nervous system to the food that is the main issue here. You can also have the other third piece of this trifecta is what's called global sensory hyper-responsiveness, okay? And this is when a patient is extremely affected by either external or internal stimuli in themselves. So they can be sensitive, like I said, bright lights, loud noises, smells, I mentioned foods, medications, as well as to internal stimuli. So something in your body, such so like your heartbeat, or a little twitching or peristalsis in the GI tract, things that all of a sudden be become a big deal and act up and become a major symptom for people. That's sensitization. That's called central sensitization, everybody. I really want you to walk away from today's uh, video here, understanding this here. And again, you can have this without anything wrong in your body. You can have this coming completely from your brain. And you can have a multitude of ways that it shows up. I mentioned some of them here before. And they say here, a patient with sensitive sensitization generally feels sensations differently and more intensely than someone without it. Now we can tie this into a highly sensitive person, right? How many of you guys think that your HSP, I raised my hand to highly sensitive people. Okay, that, there's a word again, sensitive. So you may already have that in you to some degree that you're sensitive meaning you're high, you could be more reactive than somebody else. And then you throw in these conditions and your sensitivity can go up even more. We're going to tie in in just a moment here how the biomedical world looks at central sensitization just as a biomedical process in your neurons, your nerve endings, things like that, the chemical receptors. But actually, it's more related now we're finding to psychosocial factors. Okay, so it's not just a, a biochemical process happening in your body. It's actually related to things like anxiety, depression, okay, catastrophizing, mood, negative emotions. Okay, we're finding now that in the more recent studies in the last few years, that this central sensitization is directly correlated and related to the things I just mentioned, to the psychological factors.
which makes it very interesting to think of this. And I have seen this many, many times in the people I work with directly, so I can attest to the truth to this, where, for example, somebody was going to the store and they would go to the store and have a lot of reactions to being in the store, which would be called sensitivity reactions or central sensitization. And then as they're making progress with this work, those reactions were going down, patients make progress. And then next time I see them, they say, gosh, the last time I went to the store, my symptoms went through the roof. So again, central sensitization was back up. And I said, well, what was going on? Did something change? And yeah, there was an uptick in stress for that person. And again, the uptick in stress kicked up the sensitivity. So you can imagine that your central sensitization over here and your emotional state and stress state over here go hand in hand. Okay, so if you're more stressed, your sensitivity is going to be higher. You're going to be more sensitive to things and your brain is probably going to be more reactive. You're going to feel things more. You're going to have larger reactions to potentially normal things. Okay, so in a study here in 2019, they've made this link between central sensitization and psychological factors um, and that's associated with pain intensity. Okay, so it was, it was they mentioned here the relationship among anxiety symptoms depression symptoms, and pain intensity was completely mediated by central sensitization. Okay, so that it was central, central sensitization was the way that this worked through the body, through the brain that caused this in the body. And it was connected to people having anxiety, depression, and pain intensity. It was also connected to catastrophizing in a way as well. Okay, so we're finding here now that this hypersensitivity uh, is related to emotions, emotional states, okay? And again, here's the actual definition of central sensitization from the International Association for the Study of Pain. It's defined as, quotations, increased responsiveness of nociceptive neurons in the central nervous system to their normal or subthreshold afferent input. So basically normal or subthreshold, meaning non-dangerous, non-harmful things, okay? But the brain is perceiving it as being harmful or too much or dangerous or threatening, and it kicks off these reactions, which you call the symptoms in your body. So we're gonna tie this all in that your symptoms could be central sensitization reactions. They're related to your emotional states as well and your stress states. So we can't forget that. It's not just a separate entity this sensitization is directly related to your emotions and your emotional states. So something we have to look at here. But I just wanna bring this to your attention because in the past with central sensitization, they spoke about it at a biomedical level, but they didn't bring in the psychological piece here and how that is playing an impact as well. They did a more recent study in 2023 in the Journal of Pain, and they found very much the same thing here now they, this is a review study, so they pulled in data from uh, 66 studies, which is always more powerful because you have a conglomeration of information, totaling, totaling almost well, over 13,000 people. And they found that the central sensitization inventory, which is something I give everybody I see as a new patient, you'll be given this screening tool to see if you have central sensitization. It's called CSI inventory, uh, CSI. And it was strongly correlated with psychological constructs. Again, depression, anxiety, stress, pain catastrophize, sleep and kinesiophobia. Now kinesiophobia is a fear of movement. Okay, so fear again. So these are all psychological measures and it only showed very weak association with other things related to the body. Okay, so they went on to say here in this uh, study that this central sensitization inventory, which is something we use to determine the level of sensitization, it more closely reflects psychological hypervigilance than it does some type of increased responsiveness of your nociceptive neurons or the neurons in your system. So what we're looking at here, again, is more from a psychological aspect because there's not a way that we can measure that. It's not like we can give you an MRI or scan to determine your sensitization levels, but we can give you this inventory and then we can link it back to, again, some of these emotional and stress-related constructs here. So I hope you guys understand this. It's very important. It's one of the ways I teach this to people to understand what they're having 
when they're not having anything wrong structurally or locally in the body. There isn't any issues in the tissues, but there's issues in the brain and nervous system that is overreactive. It's oversensitive. It's central sensitization. And again, that's related to these emotions, like I mentioned, anxiety, depression, stress, catastrophization, kinesiophobia, things like that. So we want to look at all this together, but this is a model and a way for you guys to understand what's happening in you, why you're getting these crazy symptoms, why they're hanging around, why they seem to be extreme at times when you're doing very normal things. And this is something I have to work with in people all the time. And I'll share one last thing with you guys is a lot of people, when I get them going back to do exposure work as part of your recovery, you have to expose yourself to things you're not doing. Many people get a huge or medium or even small uptick in their symptoms when they go back. Now, again, a lot of people are not seeing this the right way. They're telling me, oh, Jim, I did too much. Symptoms went up. I said, wait a second. You did not do too much. Remember, this is central sensitization. Your brain reacted too much. You didn't do anything too much. You did what was normal. Okay, so we need to understand this in our recoveries of how we're perceiving how we're interpreting what's happening here is very critically important for you guys because if you see it the wrong way, you're creating more sensitivity. You avoid and pull back, you're creating more sensitivity. You tell your brain it's too much, you're creating more sensitivity. Can you see that? Which will cause these neurons to react even more and your anxiety to go up more and the other emotional states to also increase, which again will increase more sensitization. So I hope this makes sense, everybody. If you want help with this, this again, part of the process I help people with when we're working with people one-to-one or in my group sessions, we touch on this, is understanding this is important and putting it into practice for you, how it relates to you individually is very important. Something I work on with people through my coaching practice to get all of you back. I want everybody listening here, if you're not getting better, reach out, reach out. That's my job to at least give you an assessment And if you want coaching support, help you get on the right track to healing. All of you can get better if you have these brain and nervous system conditions. The brain is neuroplastic and absolutely change. It may take time. I need you to understand this. It might not be a quick fix for some of you. It might take you more time than you think, but you can get there if you stick with this. Once we know you have it, we can start to work with some of these processes that are at the brain and nervous system level. So again, I thank you so much, everybody. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. If you want support or help or coaching, reach out, go to my website, thepainpt.com. And I thank all of you for being here and we'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.